Okay, welcome back to my ceramics class. We are going to do uh, another project. Um, and so what this project is, it's creating a moon vase, which is a typical kind of Japanese form. And what's really kind of um, interesting about them is that they're very full. It's sort of the, uh, the idea of replicating the fullness of a full moon. But even what's more interesting is that it strives to embrace like the imperfect and not strive to make things perfectly circular and spherical um so we're going to be using the pinch and coil method um what i have set up already here is i have a base so this is leather hard um i pinched and coiled and built it just like um one of the serving trays one thing i did do to try to give it more volume right because it tapers outward was each coil i kind of stacked and cantilevered outward as I worked my way up to try to slowly create more of a voluminous belly to this form. Um, so this is what I would call soft leather hard. I could pick it up, it's gonna hold its shape, um, but it also can be like manipulated and it's just a lot more structurally sound. I have a, another sort of half over here um, as well. This one's actually a little bit softer, but that's okay because this one's gonna go on top. So what we're doing here is we're basically taking the coil and pinch method and creating a, a bowl um, and then we're going to be sort of once the pieces are leather hard we'll be flipping them upside down and then we're going to be sort of attaching them. Um, so I didn't really demo the actual building of them. I think most of you are pretty comfortable handling that um, technique just giving the assignments submitted through Canvas. Um, so. I spared you that and I'm going to show you, I think what's more important is how to go about attaching them. So I have my bottom piece and then if you kind of look down low, I have some high spots, some low spots. What I am going to do before I start to attach the two, I'm just going to go ahead and get in here and kind of level off some of these higher areas so this rim is a little bit more even. By no means does it have to be perfect. Um, so I looked at that one. This one's, I'm actually not going to mess with this one at all. It's going to be good enough. So I got your bottom and your top. You do need to sort of be considerate of the diameter, you know? Like they need to kind of be somewhat close. Like this is a little bit, the top is a little bit smaller than the bottom, but that's okay. Um, and you'll see why when we get to the attaching portion. So what I'm going to do now is roll out a nice coil of clay. I would say the same thickness of the clay coils that were you were using to create your form. And we're gonna sort of use this coil to bond the two hemispheres with one another. Make sure that it is um, long enough to fully come around the pot. And that's kind of pretty darn close right there. So what I can do is I'm gonna take my sponge. Um, we do need to slip and score thoroughly, but I'm gonna show you another thing we can do. I have my sponge with a little bit of water, and what I'm gonna do is just sort of gently sponge some moisture onto the rims of both the top and the bottom portion. So then I can take my fork, or if you have a serrated rib or your needle tool, and I'm going to scratch and rough up those surfaces. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. So what's happening here is as I'm roughing up and scoring the surfaces, I'm creating slip. If you want to try this out, you can. If you want to go and just use the traditional way, that works too. The main thing is you gotta score and you gotta use slip. So you'll notice that I'm scoring pretty aggressive and pretty deep, right? You want the scores to be pretty roughed up. I'm going to dump out some water there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. And I'm going to do the same thing with the top hemisphere. I'm going to add a little bit more water. I can go ahead and start scoring. What we're going to do next is we're going to take that coil of clay that we rolled out and we're going to um, compress it and basically sandwich that between the two uh, hemispheres, the top and the bottom. So I'll set that one aside. I'll go ahead and grab my base. And personally for me, I love the pinch marks. I tend to keep them and show them off rather than hide them, but you know, it's up to you. If you want to smooth them, you can use the metal rib or the wooden rib and kind of work at them. Um, so then 
I'm going to take my coil and I'm going to stick it directly right on top. I'm not going to have it cantilever over, just right on top. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start pinching. So I'm using my thumb on the inside to push the clay down and my index is controlling the clay on the outside. I'm going to try and do it this way so people can kind of see a little bit better. A little awkward, but make it work. Take your time. Everything with clay takes patience. Um, if it's, you know, if your piece is too soft and you try and do this too quickly, well, I'm sure you will understand what's going to happen. It's going to cave in, right? It's The clay won't support itself. So once I have my clay coil on there, what I'm going to do now is spend some more time pressing and compressing this clay coil into my previously made clay wall to kind of smooth things down and make sure that they're thoroughly bonded. So I'll do this on the inside. And then I'll also go ahead and do that on the outside as well. And what I'm doing right here is just taking my thumb and kind of smearing, compressing that clay that I've just put on onto the rim of the pot. So the idea is now we have two leather hard pieces, but we're using this soft clay in between the two halves to kind of really help us out to get things to bond. I'll go ahead and kind of pinch things and clean up the surface later once I get things joined. So then I'm going to go ahead and carefully take my top. And you'll notice that I have a, uh, a base. So when I built this, I rolled out a little slab and built it from there. You do need a base. Um, so we're closing the form in, but we're then going to go back in and cut away the top area. So I'm just going to kind of line things up. So things are looking pretty good here. And then I can do a couple things. I'm going to take just a piece of wood. If you have a wooden spoon in your house, it's going to work great. And I'm going to, what's called paddling. And paddling can be used to compress things together, um, vertically, horizontally, or it can be also used to manipulate the shape. I can start paddling the outside of this form. But I'm just going to kind of paddle the top down to make sure it's nice and snug. Then I can go ahead and start using my finger. Um, another tool, your wooden knife, which is good for cutting and drawing, you can use the back of your wooden knife tool, this area, and use this guy to kind of comb that soft clay coil into the top portion of the moon base. As you're probably already kind of figuring out, the book that we're using um, really is inspired by a lot of traditional Japanese forms and techniques. Um, just sort of readapted by Melissa for her work. Um, so now I'm just kind of smoothing things. Another thing you can do um, is what's called paddling. And the idea is that you can see these bulges here. I can slowly paddle and turn the piece. And what's interesting about paddling is it's like this most basic thing, but it's A, super controlled, and it's like really easy to kind of slowly get the clay to do what you want just through turning and slowly coercing the clay to kind of go where you want. Like I have this big bulge here, right? I want to get that in. I want to try and get this a little bit more even. Um, I'm definitely by no means trying to make this perfectly smooth. If you want to, using your metal rib and maybe a little bit of water and smoothing, you can really refine things. I mean, you can paddle not only the area that you just joined, but you can literally start paddling the whole form. And you can see where I'm paddling, it's starting to become really, really smooth too. So that's another way to kind of get that smooth look of things. Okay, so things are pretty good. If you have like a big bare spot, maybe kind of in here, I can go ahead and kind of just add some more clay. You all are probably getting the idea. So with the, now I can take my needle tool, a wooden tool. Um, if you have like a just a little knife too in your house, um, that's going to work well too. So what I'm going to do is so go ahead and start to cut my opening. Now you can decide how big of an opening you want. 
You can decide if you want to put like a, a, a neck and add clay to there. I'm going to start small. Let's see where we can go, right? Hmm. That's a little too small. I'm going to keep going and make it a little bit bigger. And the clay is like that perfect leather hard consistency. It's just really enjoyable and a lot more pleasant to work with. So I have, you know, my hole. So this is where you get to kind of decide how you want things to look. If you wanted to, you can make the hole bigger, kind of get in there. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna start pinching this out maybe. Trying to give it like a little bit more of a neck. sort of like trying to get this clay in a little bit more. Slowly kind of bringing my hands in to kind of make this um, just a little taller. Kind of want more of a sharp transition between like the shoulder of the pot and what's called like the neck. If you want, this is, you can get your hand in there, start kind of stretching things out or altering the shape if you need to. Now that, that hole's there, it's got like this really kind of hollow sound when you start paddling. A wooden spoon, a wooden spatula is going to work good. It's to the clay can totally get washed off. You're not going to ruin it. So, so what's looking better in my eye? Kind of got this nice kind of egg dome shape to it. I'm going to take, this is just me. You don't have to add any more. I'm going to take some more clay. I'm going to start pinching a taller neck on there. So if you wanted to make more of a bottle form, you could keep sort of building up. I'm just gently pinching and smoothing and refining. So last week's videos, I I went over handles and decorating things. Um, so you don't have to put a handle on anything if you don't want to, and you don't have to carve or decorate into your forms if you don't want to. I just wanted to show you those things as other options. Um, some of you already had done that, but these two projects this week are gonna be, I think, a little bit more time consuming and a little bit more labor intensive because you're kind of working in a bottom section, you're working in the top section, then you have to kind of work on bonding them, and then you have to decide, okay, what's my surface gonna be? Am I gonna smooth things? Am I gonna show things off? Do I wanna carve on them? Am I gonna add handles? Um, the, the possibilities are infinite, right? Like I'm kind of just thinking maybe there are handles up here, maybe there are handles on their side. Um, it's really up to you. But at this leather hard stage is when you have all that time to um, play around with things. If things are drying out on you, you can spray them down thoroughly. Oh, that's like, there we go. And then I can just wrap them up thoroughly and then come back to them. Um, so that's sort of the idea of the moon jar um, and I'm interested to see where you all will take it. Uh, I hope that was helpful. I've also included some other videos on the moon jar and sort of like the history of it and sort of its place in like uh, Asian culture tradition in terms of their practices. So check those out. Um, I'm gonna let this stiffen up a little bit. I'll do some more things to it and then um, you'll kind of see the finished product then we'll sort of get into another demo. Um, if you have not already, 
uh, make sure you're uploading your assignments onto Canvas. That's the only thing I suggest. If you have any confusion on how to do so, um, just, just let me know, okay? See you in the next video. Bye.